Welcome, Gemini, singles, totally singles, completely singles. Doing your Meet the Soulmate read for November, mid-November to be exact, as I can. Time, it's shaky. Ethereal Visions, Illuminated Tarot Deck. This is for Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus signs. Um, and it's a positive read. It's an always positive read. shouldn't be triggery to anyone. Because we're simply asking spirit here to describe the one that's right for you, to describe your soulmate, the one that's right for you to do your soul work with here now. And I'm going to use eight cards. I'm going to look at their emotional nature, their intellectual nature, sexual love nature, and what I call core values and lifestyle. Uh, get a, a reading on them. Um, but you know, I say super singles because, I mean, it's kind of a privilege. It's uh, it's an honor. It's a gift to be single because there's 8 billion people and there's a world of possibilities. You know, it's kind of the Neptune energy. It's what could be. Um, and so this is the one. Um, I have Cancer on the bottom of the deck. I don't really read the bottom of the deck in this one, but I just saw it. I had to mention it. Uh, lining with soul's purpose. So... Maybe uh, you're someone that has been aligning with your soul's person and you're seeking also then a spiritual person. Let that be so. I'm asking here in the name of love and light, only so as serves the greatest good spirit. Can you guide us in this reading for Gemini? Let me be a hollow bone and let me describe this person who is their soulmate. Nine of Pentacles. This is in the emotional position. We'll pull two cards. We'll have the Nine of Pentacles. Over the King of Swords here. Let me put it here. Let me pull their intellectual position. Again, no one's breaking up with you, but we do have the Three of Swords in the intellectual position. Hmm. And the Page of Pentacles. Now that's interesting. Here I'll read the sexual and love nature and the core values and lifestyle over here. Well, let me look here. I usually see the moon in the emotional area. We're looking for the sun here with this Three of Swords and Page of Pentacles. I, I see a Capricorn moon person with this Nine of Pentacles. Um, and they had a good childhood. I think they may have had a single parent. It may not have been... Uh, it most likely was a woman, I mean, given our culture. Uh, just the fact that it's King of Swords doesn't mean it was a male. Um, but with the King of Swords, their parent may be a strong air sign personality. Um, someone who was kind of no-nonsense, who um, probably was stern, a stern parent, a good parent, loving parent. They have this Nine of Pentacles, very solid energy. You know, the moon mostly expresses child energy until uh, we get old enough to speak and become like, you know, near the age of reason, really. Um, so it, your parent was very stable, very emotionally stable, um, very intelligent, um, high functioning, this parent here of your soulmate. Um, so they would have benefited from that. So this would be someone, their parent naturally, who would have been in, uh, interested in their childhood, uh, uh, in their early education, and right on probably to college level. Uh, I'd see that a lot. This would be like a parent who would really be kind of pushing them in terms of um, their education. Kind of expecting a lot out of this person. And this person, I'm not just saying this because it's your soulmate, Jim and I, uh, with the Page of Pentacles under the Three of Swords, they're um, very, very sincere. I think we have a Libra here with this Three of Swords. Um, they are someone that is easily hurt by words. Uh, one thing about their parent, um, they may have been a little harsh in their words, uh, a little critical. Um, so they may still be sensitive to that. Um, any kind of harsh criticism uh, intellectually they wouldn't react to it well 
So I'm going to tell you, this uh, page of Pentacles is a uh, Virgo Mercury. I think they're probably going to have other Virgo energy. Um, so they're your soulmate and say they were perfect. Um, so, you know, they, they, if this is in the, uh, this is the conscious position up top, unconscious below, all the way across. So we're talking the mind here, the unconscious mind, the conscious mind. So I think they're aware of this. Um, and there's a real humbleness about them with this page of pinnacles. Um, you know, the moon is so much more about the mind, I think, than and it's often said in astrology. Well, it's Mercury, Mercury. Um, but it's also the moon. It's, uh, you know, the unconscious is most of us, huh? So they may be an only child, too. I'm getting that a couple times. Uh, this King of Swords and the Nine of Pentacles. You see they had a parent. They worked very hard. Um, set a good example. Um, this is someone that works hard. That is very sincere. Um, and probably they're going to be someone as you meet them and interact with them. They're really going to do a lot of listening. And they're not going to do a lot of speaking. And when they do speak, it's going to be along the lines of... Uh, Maybe reiterating what you said uh, to show that they understand um, are in some way is kind of succinctly, and they really probably consider everything a lot before they say it. The Virgo in this uh, energy. Um, so right off the bat, too, with this person, um, they're probably not a. Mm, esoteric minded person from what I'm seeing because they're probably going to be uh, logical and practical and um, probably they're not easily fooled this person you know uh, kind of their Achilles heel is they're probably like way more sensitive than they let on because uh, I think they may put up a pretty good front you know they may even have a resting bitch face that could just put people off and make you feel like they are very uh, secure in themselves and uh, in a assailable, you know, uh, invulnerable somehow, um, but but they're not really. Okay, they're human. Hair fan. This is in a sexual position now. Hmm. Give her energy. It's a long way to Taurus. <sighs> Queen of Wands. This is in their sexual energy. Hair font over the Queen of Wands. Hmm. I'm trying to think. Um, it's really probably a Virgo Venus. That would make the most sense. And I would have a feeling that this uh, Venus is in the seventh house. And that would put Mercury there in the seventh house. They could be conjunct in the seventh house. And you have a Libra sun. So you have tremendous uh, emphasis upon relationship and the other. A natural impulse to compromise, to listen, uh, to try to understand. Um, and so far, here's where I see the passion. That's the, that's the bedroom when the door's closed here. This is Mars energy. So they got a Leo, uh, Mars, maybe. That makes sense. Really strong Leo, Mars. You see the cat here, and you see the lion's throne. Leo. So probably, sexually, they're going to be uh, a lot different than the vibe they normally give off. Um, like they just might literally like come alive it, the, the difference um let's see you're gemini yeah you're gonna like this it'll be fine um you know it might make you laugh it might make you laugh they're so different when the door closes from their normal demeanor this is in lifestyle core values two of swords over justice Two of Swords over Justice. I see a King of Swords over here in the emotional area. So 
So we have a Capricorn moon, a Libra sun, uh, Virgo Mercury, Virgo Venus, Leo Mars, person. And what do they do? You know, they, they seek justice if, for, like, the world. Uh, this would be someone, in terms of work, you know, think a non-profit, uh, think um, this could be an entrepreneur, uh, someone that goes their own way. Um, Libra's son. Their, their sun energy comes in really strong. Whatever it is they do, um, it's two of swords. I mean, whatever they do may involve being able to keep secrets. Uh, whatever they do may involve being able to be discreet, use discretion. Um, you know... This would be the perfect energy for a private eye. I don't know if someone has to do that. Because um, what I just said, uh, the discretion, knowing when to look the other way, knowing what to say, what not to say, when to say it, what not to say it. Yeah. And very good at picking up on the details. So if they don't do this, I mean, they could be some kind of work with a non-profit, what involves communicating, let's say, possibly with uh, wealthy uh, contributors, this kind of energy. I could see this kind of person very well dressing up, putting it together to go to any kind of social function at any kind of level and function like this. I kind of get the feeling with the two of swords over justice. It comes to mind the phrase, you know, justice is blind. Um, so they're also someone, uh, they, they get the dark side and they don't mind. Um, they, they understand that sometimes there's consequences, negative consequences to actions. And that may also be what this two of swords over justice is. And somehow their very life is involved in that, you know. Um, and in terms of their home life, I think the main thing from them is you just, they wouldn't want any uh, drama, anything like that, you know. Um, Libra, I think the decorum, uh, Venusian uh, energy, um, beautiful uh, surroundings, serene surroundings uh, like this your person. So um, let me know, Jim and I. It's meant to be a predictive read, not for someone you know likely, someone that's new, uh, someone that comes into your life now that you've cleared the runway for a soulmate. And I just want you to know it when you meet him and let me know. Because, uh, you know, uh, with something like this, it's all good. Thank you guys.